Welcome to Folk Tales by the Fireside number two. And we have a very special guest this evening. Chris would like to read a story for you this evening. And it is from Circle Round, Raising Children in the Goddess Tradition by Starhawk, Diane Baker and Anne Hill. Hmm. A Journey to the Shining Isle by Starhawk. Circle round, close your eyes and imagine. It is late at Halloween, at night on Halloween, and you are very excited. All evening long you've been out dressed up in costumes, collecting candy and apples and other treats from the houses in your neighbourhood. Now you are quiet, it is time to go to sleep but you can feel magic in the air. Do we have to go to sleep? You say. Tonight is a night for magic dreams, say the old ones. Set out an apple for Grandfather Dio, and maybe he will take you someplace. You choose your best apple and set it out on the windowsill for Grandfather Dio. Then you lie down and close your eyes. Now the room is filled with an earthly animal smell. Open your eyes and before you, Stands the glowing spirit of Grandfather Deer. The oldest and wisest stag in the forest, with many branching antlers, he he wears proudly on his head. Hop on my back, and I will take you someplace. He says. You climb on his back and hold tight to his antlers. He moves so swiftly and smoothly, you feel like you are flying out of the house, over the, t- over the tops of trees, out past the streets and cars, out into the spirit world of swirling colour. At last, you come to a sandy beach by the shore of a dark ocean. You are not afraid, even though you can't see much in the dark. Get down off my back, Grandfather Deer says. I cannot take you any farther. You now must go on by boat. You slide down off Grandfather Deer's back and thank him. A boat glides across the water and you hear the crunch of sand under the keel as it reaches the beach. Do you wish to ride in my boat, says voice. You can't see anyone, but you know the voice is magic because it sounds different to everyone who hears it. Some hear a woman's voice and some hear a man's. Some hear a child or an animal or a bird. What do you hear? Do you wish to visit the shining isle across the sunless sea? The voice says, yes, you say. Then you must pay me something. But I don't have any money. I'm only a kid, you say, and you left all your candy at home. I like stories better than money or candy, says the voice. Tell me a story about something you have done that was hard for you to do. What story do you tell? Climb into the boat, the voice says. You climb aboard and the boat slips away from short. Shore. It moves silently over the dark water. In the distance, something shines. Slowly, it goes bigger and brighter. You begin to smell something very sweet on the air. That reminds you of fruit and flowers. Now you can see the shining thing is an island in the distance. It grows bigger as you approach. On the shore are beautiful trees and flowers that shine with a light of their own. Who lives on that island, you ask? The beloved D and the uni- and the unborn, says the voice. Am I dead, you ask? No, tonight is Halloween, the only night of the year when the living can visit this island. The boat reaches the shore and the sand scrapes under its keel. Thank you, thank you, he said, jumping off and wading through the shallow water to the shore. You step up onto the shore of a magic something, of a a magic land that looks different to every person who comes here. 
you see the most beautiful place you can imagine and just the sort of place you like best. Whether it's a valley bee, whether it's a valley or mountains or a beautiful garden or a beach or a warm house, someone is there to greet you, an ancestor, someone who loves you very much. Who is it? Is it someone you know and miss and remember? Or someone you have never met before? Or is it someone you have met in a dream? You play for a long time and at last when you get hungry and thirsty and tired an old old woman appears she is so old her face is covered with wrinkles but her eyes are so bright they glow like two big moons at her feet is a big round iron pot a cauldron a cauldron she is stirring something in in it with a big wooden spoon around and around and around you go close to, uh, to the cauldron to, and look inside. At first the same star, then you notice thousands of tiny glowing lights, like little stars. Around and around and around they swirl until you get a little dizzy from watching them. Those are the souls of the dead, the old woman says. And they're also the souls of the unborn in my cauldron. I brew them back into life. Would you like to taste my brew? The old woman says. And there are also souls. Oh. She old. She holds out her spoon and puts a drop of her brew on your tongue. It tastes like the best thing in the world you can imagine. This one drop is enough to leave you perfectly satisfied. You look into her eyes again and realise she is the goddess. Remember that taste? She tells you, whenever you are afraid or have to do something hard, it will give you strength and courage. But now is it time? But now it is time to grow. Sadly, you say goodbye to the goddess. To your, you say goodbye to the goddess. To your ancestor. To everyone you have met here on the shining isle. You walk slowly back to the shore. A whole year will pass before you can visit here again, but you will remember your ancestor, and maybe in your dreams you will meet again. At the shore, the boat waits for you. You can step inside and feel the scraping of the keel on the sand as it pushes across the dark, dark waters of the sunless sea. On the opposite shore, Grandfather Deer waits. You smell his warm animal smell and the rich smell of moist earth. Now the boat reaches the shore again. And you thank the magic person who has guided the boat for you. You jump out, splashing through the shallow water, and hop onto Grandfather Deer's back. Again, you fly through the swirling colours of the spirit world, back over the treetops and the streets to your own house again. You thank Gra Grandfather Deer as you slide down from his back and feed him a special apple. Then you curl to sleep, warm and safe, in your own bed. Thank you, Chris. That was an amazing reading of that story. Don't forget to leave out an apple for Grandfather Deer on Halloween. I might do that this Halloween. <laughs> and we will see you again next time. Thank you.